Hello, hello, and welcome to the Donna Dot Show. Um, we're kind of in a festive mood today. We're going to have 50 minutes of unscripted Donut entertainment. As doctors of Donut, we're going to be prescribing healthy choices for you, so stay tuned. I'm your host, Myra Wenzel, and I have David Pine and Cecil Phillip as my co hosts. And we have our special guest, Kristen Basu. And we're going to be talking about migrations to Donut Maui today. So welcome, awesome. everyone. And I see I'm already getting questions, and I have some people from Brazil, so Guataji. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to stay with this thing. It's too hot in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, so, Basso, so why, why don't you introduce yourself first? All right. Hey, um, well, that's my, my face is very big. I don't know if I like myself that much, but uh, hey, folks, uh, good to be here on the .NET Docs show. I'm Sam. Uh, I'm an old man. I've been doing .NET and just a little bit of JavaScript for a long, long time. Uh, I'm a dev advocate uh, with Progress Software. Um, hopefully, you know, with the things we make, uh, Telerik and Kende UI and Fiddler and everything, we try making developers a little bit more successful. So that's it. Thank you. That's awesome. No, and Sam, I know you're a great guy. Um, oh, we've met in conference and I, I meet, like, I, I miss seeing people face to face on conferences. Um, so we try to imitate what conferences are like. So we're going to have our checkup dog uh, for, for now for us to check up. And I'm going to share my screen as things go chaotic here in the world of back end updating things behind the scene. Okay, uh, let's see if it's in there, add stream, ba, 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 ba. okay, awesome. So let me pull up the banner for that as well. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see a banner with an Aka link. This is pointing to the Maui Preview 10. So you may or may not know that MAUI, uh, which also stands for .NET Multi-Platform App UI, is actually in preview. And we had planned originally to ship this as part of .NET 6. That date had slipped. Uh, so David uh, Ortono put together a little blog post kind of saying that it's, uh, you know, we want you to still install the preview bits and uh, basically showing you how to get that workload as part of this. Um, and the main thing is, you know, while we do talk about some of the things that were updated and some of the things that you can uh, utilize uh, and, and do with it, um, the main thing here is really at the very bottom, and that is the feedback. Since this is preview, we would love for any developers around the world to install the preview, and uh, we would like to formally solicit your feedback. So we want to hear from you what you like, what you don't like, what's difficult about it, how it can be improved. And with that, we will continue to work towards incrementing and building it out um, to your satisfaction. But uh, that blog post is short and sweet, as will this checkup. Uh, and then I think hey, we're David, just going to Yeah, yeah. Can I comment on this real quick? Absolutely. So uh, two things, and uh, you're going to maybe um, uh, see me talk through some of this. Uh, much of what .NET Maui would be, like the framework bits are actually already in place in .NET 6, but uh, the tooling requires a lot of things, uh, you know, dependencies on Apple, Google, Visual Studio 2022, both on Windows and Mac. That's the part that's catching up. So this is later for, you know, uh, sometime Q1 or Q2 of next year. and. The fast-paced world of preview software that we live in. Um, this is actually fairly public information. So this is preview 10 that you're showing. Mm -hmm. The next version of Maui, uh, which is preview 11, uh, drops this week. So either today or tomorrow. Awesome. That is great. So this is perfect timing for the show for us to share this blog post and check up accordingly, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into the hallway track where we're going to focus on. Uh, I see we have a question first. No, no, I was just like, like Fuse Naval was saying that there are C sharp and F sharp event blogs. So since we're in like holiday mood, uh, go check ah, that out as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, let's there jump into real, the hallway. Real good track. ones, yeah. So in the hallway track, this is where we try to emulate the conversations that you might have at a, a developer conference 
uh, not in a session, but instead in the hallway where lots of those uh, kind of intimate conversations can occur. So we welcome you into our pseudo circle here and we want you to participate. If you're watching live, please do ask questions. We will make sure that we uh, address them as they come in. And uh, we thank you all for being here on this special day. So Sam, go ahead and take it away, my good sir. Uh oh, I'm in the limelight, am I not? <laughs> You're in the hot seat now, man. It's all you. Yeah, good to hear you. Uh, so, so I think your mic is working now. There you go. Yeah, I was just making sure that everything was was working okay. Yeah. All right. How long uh, do I have before you kick me out of here? Fourteen hours. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got fifty minutes. <laughs> You're here forever. You're never leaving us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, roughly just, just under an hour. Okay, good, good. Um, so, you know, we, um, uh, David and Myra kind of mentioned that we had going to talk about, you know, Dr. Maui, but um, I mean, this is an informal, uh, you know, uh, show where we can, I mean, if we have to digress and talk about other things, that's fine for me too. Um, but, uh, you know, let's talk about Maui a little bit. Um, and since like David and Philip, our, our sisters are here, I feel inclined like I need to talk about the web stuff a little bit uh, and not just stick to my native land. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's talk. Um, uh, I, I do this as a conference talk, so I'm going to spare you the slides, but I, I do want to maybe um, bring on a couple of uh, things for imagery because I think it makes um, sense as we're talking through this. Um, so, you know, a lot of things in, in software are seasonal. And as we talk to, you know, developers or enterprise customers, like we are seeing this trend uh, a lot. Uh, and it's got to do with .NET MAUI, but um, the big push is with .NET 6, right? This is out, out of the gate now. Um, as of November, uh, and .NET 6 carries the uh, LTS patch, which is the long-term support patch. So, you know, a lot of um, developers and enterprises, uh, they're thinking about, you know, moving their apps uh, into the new .NET. So migration and, you know, modernization are kind of big on people's uh, minds. And uh, this is this is going to be a good time, you know, going into next year, going to start thinking about what it is. Um, you know, uh, enterprises run on a variety of software, and you, you got to love uh, the uh, the term that we use, like legacy software. It's not legacy if it's running your business, right? So, uh, you know, Dotnet Six is kind of bringing up those conversations. Um, what if I have desktop uh, investments? Um, what if I am doing web stuff? Like, what does all this mean? And I'm keep, I keep hearing about Maui and Blazor. How does this all mean? So. Um, I, I want to maybe talk through a variety of these platforms. Maybe we'll jump through the hoops a little bit, but uh, hopefully some of this relates to what you're doing. Um, so just to kind of kick start, uh, if, if you're doing mobile stuff, you, you know, uh, you have a lot of choice, right? I, I like saying uh, it's 2022, right? We, we're not working anymore. Uh, these are the four ghosts of us who have showed up uh, here. It's the holidays, but going into <laughs> next year. <laughs> You have a lot of choice, right? Uh, if you want to go native, go native. If you want to build like web stuff, you know, PWAs or JavaScript native apps, go for it. I mean, the tool, tooling is great. You are going to be cross-platform, uh, so you're, you're fine. Um, and, and so essentially, like what you're going to see, like with desktop and mobile and web, it's it's a lot about like code sharing, right? It's 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 good for developers to be um, thinking about like I have a library here, how can I share this across you know multiple apps, multiple platforms? And for those of you who are inclined to write kind of the cross compile story, you want to write C sharp or F sharp higher level languages or or Dart and compile it down into native bits, then you are looking at the cross compile story. There are some choices here. There is you know React and Flutter. <laughs> Uh, but Xamarin and Dr. Maui are the, uh, you know, the things that we uh, uh, care about as Dr. Uh, devs. Yeah. On the, I was going to say on that slide, I really, really like that you kind of express that it's mobile your way, right? That title is yeah. very appropriate because there's not just one solution to do anything in programming. There's many, many ways to achieve the same thing. So it's really what your team is comfortable with and, you know, uh, just highlighting some of the different ways to do it, I think is really impactful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and again, like folks watching, like I, I don't want to bring up slide decks here. I'm just kind of setting the stage in the first like five minutes before we kind of dive into stuff. Uh, a lot of folks are asking us about this, which is, you know, the traditional way in which we have done like Xamarin forms uh, or rather Xamarin, like Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android. We learned how to write shared uh, C-sharp logic and then we built the UI for each platform separately. 
uh, th this is still an option. And this is actually baked into .NET 6 now. This is called .NET for iOS and .NET for Android. Uh, it's all there and you can still use it, but it does need you to know the native stack a little bit. So uh, what we have been kind of a fan of in the last you know five, six years has been Xamarin Forms, which is as a .NET dev, I don't have to learn a whole lot about iOS or Android. I can just get by writing some shared UI code, which is an abstraction. So this is the reality uh, present, and, and this is probably where we're going to start from. Uh, but um, it, it's okay to acknowledge that there are some pain points in, in the present reality that we are trying to address. The team, Dr. Mavi team, is trying to address and kind of make this a little bit uh, open for for everyone. Uh, so that's why um, you are seeing, uh, you know, Dr. Maui. Actually, let me um, let me uh, bring this up so you're not seeing the slight degree of this. So this is Maui. Um, it's coming next year, uh, like I said, and it's essentially meant to give you more confidence, you know, in in writing cross-platform .NET apps. Uh, it's not Xamarin, it's just all baked into .NET now, and you are getting more confidence to reach uh, more platforms. It has always been mobile first, but now desktop is very welcome. And something that Maui does well is, you know, not reinvent the wheel. Um, you, you you can go to uh, Windows with uh, with WinUI 3. You can go to Mac OS with uh, Mac Catalyst. So uh, it's a good place to be, uh, and tooling is catching up. Um, so um, <laughs> on the desktop front, uh, before you jump into stuff, and you know uh, David and Cecil and Myra might laugh at me, but I'm an old man. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, when I look at, uh, you know, all the different ways in which we can build for desktop, like it's liberating for me, but I, I understand why people uh, are, uh, you know, uh, get worked up. Like, why do I have so much choice? Because it's like 20 years of, you know, desktop development. You can do all of your pure Windows stuff. Uh, yeah, nothing's uh, changing. All of those run on .NET 6, which we look at. You can do web stuff, which we can bring it over, uh, PWAs and Electron and .NET Maui as well. Uh, and you can go all in native with Maui or or Blazor, so it's it's a good place to be. So that's that's Windows, and the Mac story is not too dif different. Uh, you can build native Mac apps, or you can have you know different types of renderers that take your uh, web code and render. Uh, not mentioning NFC, yes, you can still do NFC. It's, it's kind of in the WPF ballpark, and then we'll we'll talk about WPF uh, quite a bit more. Um, okay, uh, and then web, because again, you know, David and Cecil uh, do quite a bit of web stuff, if I understand. So uh, again, you can build for web however you want, right? Um, you know, Angular, React, uh, plain JavaScript, if that's what your thing is. Um, but a lot of .NET devs are fond of Blazor, obviously, for good reason, because it's, it's .NET and C Sharp front and back, what's not to like. Uh, you can run server-side or you can run fully client-side with Wasm. And um, Blazor actually plays heavily into this migration and you know modernization story because you can bring that in into desktop very comfortably with, with Maui or even like without Maui. Um, so this is the thing uh, that you hear Microsoft talk about a lot. It's hybrid apps. And essentially, it's just one way of doing it, not the only way, but it's just through a web view and it's very easy. Uh, and this is a great story for you know modernizing your apps. You know, for, for enterprises, it's, it's difficult. You can't just like drop an app and just rebuild it from scratch. It's expensive, right? So you have to think about ROI. You have to think about like, can I take bite-sized pieces of this and slowly have islands of modern things in my app? Uh, so, you know, I mean, all of these are choices. There's no one way. Um, so to uh, that end, we yeah. actually had a guest, a good friend here, Tropical Geek on Twitch asking, how can you main, uh, maintain standards with so many options, right? There's so many different ways to do it. Like, wh what would you suggest in that scenario? All right. So when you are thinking of, you know, modernizing your apps, one of the first things I uh, try recommending is look into your existing app architecture and try to uh, have some sort of loose coupling. So you, like your business logic should not be smashed together with your UI. That makes it difficult to uh, kind of lift and shift. So move it over into a .NET standard library, right? Every platform that we're going to look at today, you know, Blazor, Maui, all of the web stuff, they all understand .NET standard library if you're writing .NET code. So move move your you know business critical stuff into a standard library that you can share across all platforms. Uh, so that's kind of the first look. Now kind of re-architect your app a little bit, move uh, over some of the core pieces into uh, a library that you control, and then you can um, you know have .NET talk to JavaScript if you're writing spy applications or. Uh, you know, have the same library show up across uh, Windows and, and Mac and, and mobile. So I think .NET standard is kind of one common library or language that we can speak to kind of share code. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like that. I like that answer you have. And I think what I would add to it is, like when I look at .NET and, and tools like Maui, for instance, just as an example, 
I kind of look at them as like abstractions for productivity, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, right? And so, you know, you can write bad code or good code in, code in any language or framework, but at the end of the day, it's an abstraction that allows us to be able to do and target a lot of things and go to a lot of different places. And so now as you're kind of looking at the types of experiences you want to create for your users and customers and things of that nature, um, and you want to have that consistent um, look and feel and user experience across the board, you had to kind of think about, well, how exactly do we want to build these things and deliver these things to the people that are going to use them? So again, Maui is just like an abstraction over that, right? At the end of the day, we're still going to have to do software engineering, right? We're still going to have to, you know, design code and think about abstractions and things of that nature, just like we have been for decades. But again, Maui is just a thing on top of that that allows us to do it in a little bit more of a robust way. Yeah, yeah well said. Uh, another thing we hear a lot are like .NET Conf just happened, you know, earlier in November. So I encourage folks to kind of check out all the recordings. It's, it's I'm still watching all those videos. I haven't content, like watched half content. of them yet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, minimal APIs is out. This is another way for you to build APIs. Uh, kind of lowers the barrier to entry, and it kind of utilizes some of the C# -sharp 10 features, which I should not get into language because like I actually cannot read David's code. It's like too sophisticated. He uses all the latest like uh, C# -sharp bits, but. Hey, it's it's there. It's exciting for you to kind of start into. Uh, so all of these combined, like um, if you're talking about uh, modernization, like what is it that you're talking about? I think these are some things that folks might have in mind when they are looking at ahead at .NET 6 and .NET MAUI and uh, looking back. You know, you, you go to these like conferences or sessions and you look at all the future facing stuff and then you kind of come back to your reality, which is a lot of this. It's not bad, actually. So uh, let's just talk through this a little bit. So let's say you have desktop investments, like you have been doing WinForms and WPF for years. Uh, how, do, how does that move over? If you have been doing, you know, core Windows stuff like UWP um, or Xamarin Forms, that's another question. Like, and that's probably the easiest question of all. Like, I have a Xamarin Forms app. How does it move to .NET Maui? It's just like a snap. It's very easy. Or, you know, a lot of what um, a lot of .NET shops have had to do in the last, you know, five, 10 years is, uh, ASP.NET has been great for web apps, but it's kind of still server-side. You can do Ajax, but it, it is still heavy server-side. Uh, so uh, .NET is very fast on the back end, like as an API. So a lot of folks have built modern client-side apps, uh, spy apps using you know React or Vue or Angular. And uh, you are, you're still a .NET shop, but you maybe have a set of teams that do JavaScript for building the spa. And you're wondering, and you're looking ahead at Blazor and Maui, and you're wondering like, okay, can we now come back or can we mix and match? Can we can both coexist? And then the answer to all of that is yes, you can absolutely kind of mix and match. So um, here's my, there's no right or wrong. And this is kind of me trying to break it down. First thing is, you know, the Scott Hunters of the world, uh, any, anybody in .NET team will tell you like .NET framework, uh, it's not gone. It's not breaking away. It's going to keep getting security fixes. .NET Framework is a part of Windows. It's going to be around until Windows is around. So if you don't need any of these newer APIs or if you don't need like side-by-side -side hosting, stay on .NET Framework. You're going to be fine. But, you know, as you want to upgrade your code base so developers are kind of uh, excited to work on newer stuff, then you have some options. So if you have desktop apps or if you have mobile apps, there, there's some good help here. Uh, there is something called .NET Upgrade Assistant, which is a command line tool, um, wonderful uh, in what it does. It takes your uh, you know, desktop applications. We talked about WinFromps and WPF. They run on .NET Framework. You can move them over to .NET Core uh, 3.0, .NET 5, and .NET 6. They all run on .NET 6, which is amazing, like something that 15 and 20-year-old stuff runs fine on .NET 6. And then you can start, you know, modernizing. Um, maybe you bring in some, you know, um, uh, some inking support. Maybe you bring in a modern web browser. All of those are options for you. If you are starting Greenfield, then WinUI 3 is your latest, you know, UI and UX stack. It's Fluent inspired. And, but that's only for Windows though. If you do want to go cross-platform, .NET MAUI is your best bet. Uh, you know, it takes you to iOS, Android, and Mac and Windows. And if you're doing Blazor or if your team is doing Blazor, then you have options to kind of bring that in. Uh, yeah, that and, upgrade assistant, and that's the link. Regarding the upgrade assistant, I know that the team has been working on uh, the Maui migration too. Is that is just that the platform is still not stable enough to have that 
published yet. So yes, but we will have it in the future, right? Yes, absolutely. So by the time .NET uh, GA hits uh, sometime uh, early next year, uh, there is uh, there is a team, uh, and, and there's one person actually, Suiki Satpati, who works on the customer success team, and she's she's all in on DevOps. She really wants to make the .NET MAUI uh, upgrade or migration super easy with the upgrade assistant. It's it's kind of working, but you know it's still in the works, uh, so it would be ready. And if you did have uh, another, yeah, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say we we, we do have another question here uh, a little bit earlier. They're asking how does Maui compare to Flutter? Okay, um, here's my quick answer. Uh, it, it's not the same <laughs> thing, right? And and people are gonna hate me uh, for saying this, but Flutter <laughs> is not really native because what it does it uses uh, Skia Sharp heavily, which is a you know um, it's, it's a graphing library that lets you paint pixels on iOS or Android. Yes, you can make things fluent or material inspired, but it's a lot of pixel painting. But you don't have to do it all by hand. A lot of the components are kind of built in for you. Uh, but if you can get over the fact that you still have to write Dart, which again, it's an object-oriented language. You can learn, nothing against it. Uh, go go do that because the dev cycle is fairly quick. Uh, you know, the dev inner loop uh, that we call it, when you write some code and you want to see it changed uh, as soon as possible, that's very good with Flutter. Um, but it's not quite native to me, but where Maui tries to come in and be really native, uh, native UI on every platform, iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. So that's my quick answer. Awesome, thank you. Um, and then if you're doing web apps, uh, you know, web forms, still very productive, but you probably want to move ahead. If you don't want to do the big jump to Blazor, which is probably the right jump, uh, server side or client side, then you can take baby steps like with MVC or Razor class libraries, like slowly bring in islands of modern things. Uh, and you know, a lot of folks who have been doing uh, Angular or React, uh, you can still do .NET in the back end with minimal APIs. You can do, uh, you can embed stuff with Maui or PWR electrons and your .NET code can actually talk to JavaScript code. So all good choices, right? I've been, geez, I've been like 15 minutes talking. Let's let's look at some stuff. How about <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Well, it's been awesome. awesome. I think it's a nice oh, context setting for yeah. people that are watching. And like we have sometimes, like sometimes we have experts already on the, con the, on the subject, but we are, we have people that are new to the yeah. technology. So it's yeah. awesome. No, and 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 we are not experts by any means, but we are we are scratching the surface, and this is something we we try to be conscious of because like a lot of people kind of are coming new in the industry, and there are like a lot of terms we are throwing at them may not may not all resonate. Uh, so let's talk about Dr. Maui. So this is coming, like I said, um, the docs here are in the works. Uh, so for any detailed docs of how do I do data binding, how do I do navigation, all of that, you can go back to Simon Forms docs, which are uh, fully functional. And if you want to start with Blazor, like do a search, this is likely where you're going to end up on. You can get started on your really any platform. Um, so let's uh, let's look at some you know migration stories. Let's start with uh, Simon Forms first. Um, if, I'm on a Mac, but I will show you the Windows side as well. Um, if you are uh, on, on a Mac, then you have VS Code and VS 2022 for Mac is coming along nicely. It's not done yet, uh, but it will be uh, early next year. Uh, so that, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm here on. But let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. So it took a second to come back. It's Monday for Visual Studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's Still waking up. It's Monday for everyone, right? Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Even the MacBook too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me show you like what the present looks like, and then we're going to look at uh, what the future might look like. Um, yeah, I think this will be an interesting demo to see because I know one of the things that a lot of folks have asked me is, "Hey, I already know Xamarin, or I've been starting to learn Xamarin." And I want to say Xamarin specifically, Xamarin Forms. Right. You know, what is what does that path forward look like for those types of people um, yeah. in terms of apps, yeah. and then just, even just like a learning path. Yeah, it should be super easy, actually. So this is kind of what Xamarin Forms does out of the box. If you do file new project Xamarin Forms, you get a cross-platform app. And uh, you get one library that's a .NET standard library that's shared. So you would ideally want to put all of your stuff in the shared thing. And then you get one platform-specific project for every uh, platform that you want to be on. So I have taken out all of the ones. But here you can have Android. You can have UWP. You can have uh, Tizen if you want to go to Samsung uh, devices. So all of that stays in different projects, and then you do builds accordingly. So what um, Xamarin Forms does out of the box is, you know, everything starts out here at AppXaml, 
uh, if I can just zoom this up. Uh, and this is kind of how we start. Uh, auto hide this. So you start up an application, and the main page is essentially the first view of the page. And notice right here we are using a new. Uh, so this is kind of uh, something that kind of splits software developers, like how much dependency injection should the templates have off the, uh, out of the box. And Xamarin Forms does not enforce anything upon you. So you are newing things up. And instead of going to a single page, you can have a navigation page. And it's just a simple you know, stack in like uh, in and out. So you can keep pushing things, pages into a stack. And then when you get back, it just pops it up. Uh, so very simple to get started. Now, here's the first uh, page in uh, my app. And I haven't done anything to it except for adding one thing here. So you get some frames, you get some labels. Uh, here's an entry. Um, and I'm trying to show you what's different actually between Maui and Xamarin Forms. Um, so the way this is uh, structured is, let me uh, go into something called custom renderers. So if I, um, you know, that's actually the Maui one, hold on. So I'm going to go to custom renderers, I'm in forms. So if I go back to something I uh, had in the slides, uh, let's see. The Xamarin Forms one. So you notice how there is a little bit of purple and green and blue. So your shared UI code, uh, which is in C Sharp or XAML, at runtime gets rendered as native UI on each platform, right? And there's a piece of code that does it. It's called the renderer. Uh, and that's actually what is changing a little bit in .NET Maui. So if I look at this code here, um, here I have an entry, which is essentially a, a text box. Uh, it's a regular entry. Um, and here I can actually customize this entry a little bit. So here is my uh, custom entry and it's just in my .NET standard library. I'm just saying, hey, I want to um, go off that interface. That's the entry uh, renderer. And I want to just customize the background to like gray, right? Uh, so let's let's try doing that. Um, so let's go, uh, let's go around this real quick. And I'm on a Mac with the Xamarin Forms project, so it knows that I have Xcode. It can go and do the build. You can also do this on Windows very easily. Uh, it just needs to, well, it's a loaded question. You, you may or may not need a Mac. You don't need a physical Mac. It does need a Mac to actually build the App Store. But if you just have an iOS device and a Windows machine, you can actually plug it in and uh, kind of get to work uh, with something called Hot Restart. So uh, what I'm trying to show you is how you can, um, how you use to customize things on Xamarin Forms and how does that uh, change with, uh, with .NET Maui. And uh, it's gonna be a little slow for the first time kind of getting my iOS simulator woken up. It's running on iOS 13. Yeah, and while that starts up, I had a question I wanna ask you, Sam. Yeah. So like you mentioned, like needing to have a device or a, a, you know, a Mac OS type machine uh, how do you feel about those services that like host Max in the cloud? Kind of yeah, no, they're, they're, they're great. So what what Sal is referring to is you don't have to have a physical Mac. There is uh, MacInTheCloud.com, which essentially you're you're paying for Mac OS a little bit, um, and then there is um, uh, Microsoft has a service called VS App Center, which is essentially a DevOps type service. Lets you do CI/CD builds, lets you do you know different types of pipelines and enterprise deployment of your app that can actually also do the cloud builds for you. So uh, Visual Studio does not care as long as you can do one handshaking uh, to get, get started with, um, <coughs> excuse me, it can just go talk to Xcode and come back and you never actually have to look at the Mac side of things. So I'm a fan. If you don't want to buy a Mac, it's, it's easy. And we um, have a good question here as well. It's like, what's the Visual Studio version that ha has Maui supporting Mac? It's 2022, okay. right? Yes, um, yes, but with a little bit of a, a hesitation because mm -hmm. it's not quite ready yet. So mm -hmm. if you have a .NET Maui project, you can open it up in VS 2020 for Mac and it will show you the solution and all the files and all the things, but it cannot do builds yet. Uh, the integration with MS Build and all the different platforms, that's that's coming. Okay, so uh, right here, if I go back to uh, you know the first view, uh, you look at this entry here. This is the regular entry that comes from the renderers. And this is my custom uh, thing where I overrode uh, that class and I said, I want to, uh, you know, a, a great background. So it gives me that. Um, but that's not the whole thing though, because uh, essentially what this does is it changes how that entry renders on iOS, Android, and all the different platforms. Uh, what if you wanted to have a custom experience on every platform? Well, now you can go into custom stuff, which is um, this one here. You can see it's in my iOS project. I am exporting, uh, I'm actually going into the entry renderer and I'm saying only on iOS, I want this change. So I'm going to open this up. 
so this one is a little slow because it actually loads up the assemblies and tries to register which render that it wants to use. And uh, now I want to use this uh, background color. Uh, and so what I would have to do is in my um, uh, you know, uh, main page, I would actually have to bring in my assembly and say, hey, don't use that entry, but use my entry. So it's, it's a very custom thing. Um, so if I go ahead and run this, and I'm going to show you what the differences are like when you go to Maui. So this migration from Xamarin Forms to Maui, this should be very, very easy. And uh, you can actually already do this uh, today. Um, but here, uh, it's going to think for a second. So you said before that it's slow. I just want a little bit more context on that. Slow when you're debugging it or like once it's deployed to production? Uh, which part do you mean slow? Like when you're, well, right now, like on my machine, I'm doing a bunch of things. So Visual Studio is responding a little slower, but okay. no, no, it's it's very, very fast. Like uh, Xamarin Forms and .NET MAUI does not get in the way of performance uh, in any way. Um, so this is now, uh, you know, a uh, purple entry, right? So because we, we customized how that looked like on iOS and I can do that on Android. So, you know, depends on if the app wants to have the consistent look and feel across all platforms, uh, but, uh, this whole custom render thing is not for the faint-hearted because it needs you to know some native stuff, right? So how does this uh, change? Uh, so let's uh, let's look at the same app here. I'm going to close this down. Uh, now, this whole architecture has evolved a little bit uh, in, in .NET MAUI. So now you have more of a uh, you know, separation. Now it's a handler. It's an interface. And, Can you zoom in a little bit on that, Sam? Yeah. The, the browser? Um, so... Uh, the button that renders uh, a Maui button does not know that it's tied to .NET Maui because that could be coming from F Sharp or Reactive UI. And at some point, there's a mapper that says, oh, you are trying to render a button. Let me get you the UI button uh, for UI kit if you're on iOS or the Android Compile button and so on. So this architecture is a little different and it's meant for you know opening it up so that you can reuse the renderers at all times. So now let's go into Maui. Okay, and uh, since I am on Visual Studio, and I will show you uh, Windows uh, in a little bit, uh, but it's going to be a little bit of command line just to kind of get you going. So first thing is, if I look at, uh, you know, .NET uh, list my SDKs, these are all the .NETs that I have, and it's, it's a lot, and it's nice. It's just one folder, right? I can you have a couple. Away. You have a couple. <laughs> have a couple. <laughs> wow. All the way from three, and you can see, like, .NET 6 started hitting, like, the previews were early, like, uh, February of this year. Uh, RC bits and RTM bits, and this is the final .NET 6 bit, which you can get on Windows or Mac and, and so on. Someone and should write thing, like a global tool that lets you clean all these up. It probably already exists, but like there is know. there is a tool for for clean for removing <laughs> SDKs. There you go. Uh, and then SDKs have workloads in them, which makes makes things fun. Um, but if you are kind of starting out new, if I do a .NET new, this this is kind of the same as what you do with file new project on on uh, in Visual Studio. You get all the templates, and based on like how many preview bits you have, you might not see all of them. But these are all the Maui stuff, like um, right up here. Like so many of the Maui ones are here. Uh, these are the two that you absolutely must have if you're going to get started Maui and Maui Blazor. Uh, so that's the Blazor hybrid story. But all of your Android stuff is here. All of your ASP.NET is here. iOS is here. Mac is here. Uh, WPF is here. It's, it's all good. So let me go into a folder where I keep all my uh, stuff here. Uh, so we're going to start with just a, you know, um, uh, maybe the same renderer since we looked at that uh, for a second. So let's go to uh, Maui optimization, I think. Yep. Yeah. So let's open this up in uh, in VS Code, and I'll show you the same code. Uh, and you don't need to throw away the stuff that you have done in Xamarin Forms, actually. Um, so this is uh, kind of the default experience that you get with .NET MAUI. So right out of the gate, you will notice that it's truly a single project. Uh, one thing that was painful with, uh, with Xamarin Forms is the more platforms you added, uh, the more projects you got, and then you had to maintain the NuGet for, uh, packages across all the projects and your fonts and your images. It was just kind of complicated. So now it's all truly a single project. Uh, so one single solution file, one CS project, and you still have this platforms thing for Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows, but they're all, all just folders. It's truly an SDK style. Uh, if I look at the CS project, it's a multi-targeted uh, app. Uh, and so you can do the builds. Uh, right in here are my resources. So my fonts and my images, those are automatically shared. And the build is smart enough to kind of pick up the right things from each platform as you're doing the builds. Can you so this zoom is the, in a little bit too on this one? Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
So yeah, that's your CS bar. This is the uh, default experience. This is how uh, you know a Maui app kind of starts out. Uh, don't read the uh, you know the comment about code first, but this is just a, this is again a step in the right direction. This is using the generic .NET um, you know host builder pattern, which is what you see in ASP.NET, in Blazor, and you know so many other .NET things. So now dependency injection is super easy. It's right here. Uh, you just inject those as services. You register them in a container, and that, that's it. Um, so what I wanted to show you was in in this app, <clears throat> excuse me, if I go look at the um, the entry uh, field again, which is what we had in Xamarin Forms, same main page XAML. We are starting out. We have an entry field here, and um, in our um, app XAML, which is kind of where the app starts out, now I have access to what's called the uh, you know Maui uh, handlers and mappers. Every handler has a mapper. Uh, this one here, um, I'm not the biggest fan of this, but you can do other ways of doing this. These are called like compiler directives. So a little bit of if uh, and if. So we are saying, if you're on iOS, I want a different color for my uh, you know, my text box here. And notice right out of the gate, I can actually have access to all of UI kit, which is the UI library that, that Apple uses. So I can, I can customize. Um, so let me um, pull up my commands because I, I tend to forget. Uh, so you have to do a .NET build, but you still need the target uh, moniker. Uh, so it knows how to do a build. So I do a .NET build uh, for iOS. That's how it knows how to build. do a build for iOS. Does the build, goes talks, talks to Xcode, and gets the uh, most default iOS simulator. Uh, happens to be uh, an iPad in this case. Uh, and you can actually choose which simulator you want to run this on. Uh, but the default here is iPad mini, sixth generation. It's, it's Apple. They want you to buy new stuff, because why not? <laughs> uh, so this app is coming up now. This is the .NET Maui app. And um, I have just changed the one label to an entry. Uh, so this is you know, .NET running natively on iOS and Android. And I love the things. splash screen. Yeah. <laughs> So this is my one entry. Uh, notice how it's uh, it's like salmon because uh, that's that's what I chose. Uh, so because <laughs> I, I actually went, went into the mapper and said, uh, you know, I want that color from my background. Now, you can still do uh, the other stuff, and, th and this is what a lot of folks ask: like, what if I have a custom renderer that I've used forever in Xamarin Forms? You don't need to throw it away. Yes, eventually you may want to make it a handler because you gain some other performance. Uh, but right in here. Uh, if I open up uh, this line of code here, what it's telling um, the Maui handlers to do is, you know, stop doing the new stuff and let me go back. There's a compatibility mode, right? So let me go back to what I had before. And in this case, I want to use the entry renderer, uh, which is my customized, you know, uh, iOS or Android, whatever it is that, that my thing is. So now if I go back and, and, and run this again, uh, you're going to notice that I don't get the, the salmon entry field because now I'm asking it to go use the Xamarin Forms renderers instead of the .NET Maui renderers. So this makes you know migrating from Xamarin Forms to .NET Maui really a breeze because you're not having to change anything. You can just bring things over as is and then slowly uh, make it use some of the latest things. Uh, let's see, is it already up? Uh, no, it's coming up. Um, so uh, if, if you had a Xamarin Forms project today, and you want to migrate over to .NET Maui, eventually you will be able to. You can still use .NET Upgrade Assistant. It doesn't do all the things yet, but uh, it's going to take your big project, which is uh, you know multiple projects in a single solution, and it's going to transform that into uh, into a single project and give you that you know shared uh, platform markup, so you can um, you know you can have the multi-targeted builds, and you get the single SDK style project. CS Proj is just says .NET six. And it brings in, you know, some of the handlers uh, that you want to use out of the case. So if so. I follow that correctly, you you're basically showing that you could have Xamarin existing like custom renderers, like a huge suite. Imagine a massive enterprise application, you know, mobile development, uh, and you could kind of piecemeal start porting it over to Maui with ease, right? You could just slowly exactly. pull in the pieces you want and then update them accordingly. Exactly. So this one here, uh, there's not much to show, but this is the Xamarin Forms renderer. So it's white because it didn't use the new handler. It just said, I, I want to use the Xamarin Forms renderer. Awesome. So you can, you can still do that. OK, um, I feel like I should uh, switch to web stuff because uh, you know, <laughs> all of you are, are doing web apps. And I understand I'm old and I'm not cool enough, but I, I get it. Uh, Blazor is very cool. Um, so let's kind of um, start with where um, uh, uh, this whole idea. Uh, but real, real quick question though that I remembered this from earlier on in the show and I, I was waiting to kind of pull it in but someone had actually asked about 
uh, what about Linux? And I'm curious, uh, for desktop, is that something that was being looked at? For .NET MAUI, right? Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. Um, right in the .NET MAUI docs, uh, supported platforms, you know, uh, even for um, Microsoft, uh, you know, engineering is uh, expensive for anybody, right? So you have to go for mass first because that's where most of your customers are. So with iOS, I read a graphic somewhere, like between iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac, you're covering like 94% of the apps that can run on, on things, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the majority. Um, so they have to go for that one first. So come .NET MAUI GA, it might not be officially supported, but it's already in the works. So this is uh, Tizen. If you have a Samsung fridge or a refrigerator that runs Tizen, that already runs uh, .NET MAUI. Linux will likely be community supported. There, there's already some work um, uh, that's been done, but I, I really doubt this will be ready um, before GA time because there's just a lot of things to do, even with the four platforms. So envision that to eventually uh, come. Awesome, thank you. You know, okay. to, to jump in yeah. real quick, like as a person that uses a lot of Samsung devices, like I'd love for us to do a show on someone that uses Tizen because I keep yeah. hearing yeah. about it and I hear it's like in refrigerators and toasters and all kinds of things. Yeah. But like I've never seen Tizen code ever in my life. Oh uh, no, it's 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 like you don't have to look at their emulators and stuff. It's actually just running straight up uh, .NET MAUI or Blazor or or, or Xamarin Prompts. It's very nice. Actually, I would be afraid like I'd break my refrigerator or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Running my code, it'd be like uh uh. <laughs> like honey, the ice maker is not working anymore. I don't know no. what happened. <laughs> like it's all done. Okay, so this whole idea of bringing web uh, to native apps, uh, you know, this is nothing new. You can actually uh, do this right now. You know, a lot of us run, uh, you know, Slack or Figma or Teams or VS Code by, by all means, like all day long. And those are all web apps essentially that are running with like Electron. So it's very battle tested, very good. But like, how about like native stuff or other ways of doing it? Electron can be a little heavy handed. Um, so there is a um, gentleman named Elon Lipton, works on .NET, has been for, you know, 20 years, very, very smart engineer. Um, like <clears throat> late or mid last year is when he first started talking about it. And this is called mobile blazer bindings. and. Um, again, I don't uh, know exactly what the plans are here, but uh, this was the first, and then it has kind of evolved into what's called hybrid Blazor apps now. Um, so let me let me show you what this uh, does. And I have a feeling that there might not be a whole lot of takers for this. Like I love this stuff, but I understand the kind of the roadblock that uh, people might have. So you can actually go uh, kind of tinker around with this right now. Um, you get a, a .NET uh, install package that you can play around with and, and you start. And right out of the gate, it uh, lets you go to iOS, Android, um, Windows, and, uh, and and Mac, but it does so using like Xamarin Forms because that was like last year. So in this case, um, uh, I am using Blazor. So you can see that like the imports Razor. This is a, dot, this is a Xamarin Forms uh, solution, but we are bringing in Blazor. Um, you know, app.cs, how our app launches is a little different. It's using Blazor mobile bindings as a host and it's wiring up the first component of our app. Um, so what this does is, um, let me show you the Hello World Razor. So this is kind of Razor code, uh, you know, Blazor code if that's what you're fond of. Uh, but in this way, there is no web view. There is no web stuff. This is absolutely native on every stack that you're on, uh, which is why I, I hesitate because you, for you to write this stuff, you do need to know a little bit about XAML. And folks who are, are against, uh, you know, some of the desktop and native mobile stuff that we do, are, they don't like XAML. And yes, it gets a little verbose, but right here, I mean, you can do like uh, Blazor code. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to, uh, you know, one URL, I have a POCO object, actually, this is the URL, JSON placeholder, which is a wonderful kind of free RESTful API to kind of play around with. So I'm going, hitting that up and I'm bringing that back down in. I'm, I have an HTTP client and I make a call. And essentially at the end of the day, uh, let's make this a little bigger. Um, I bring this into my Hello World Razor page. And for every post that I get back from that list, I have another component that essentially renders a label. So if I go ahead and run this, uh, you will notice the marked difference that is this versus the new um, hybrid Blazor uh, technique. Uh, so it's gonna spin up uh, my iOS simulator one more time. Jeez, and we haven't even gotten to uh, Angular and all the other places stuff. Well, we'll get to, we have 15 minutes until I get kicked We got off. time. Yeah, we got time. 
All right. Um, so this one is purely a native play, right? There is no nothing web involved. You're essentially using blazor like syntax uh, to you know do some native stuff here. Uh, so it spins up and it makes that HTTP call and out comes a native app. This is just a list view. So we are essentially laying this out into a stack layout and rendering each component. Now, what is to note here, if I uh, go look at uh, this piece of code here, that is a native button uh, that I'm putting in and that, that's a late native uh, label. So I can do things like, uh, you know, flipping it uh, and, you know, doing things native that I cannot do from just pure web code. So this is kind of where it started. This is Blazor mobile bindings, and you can still do that. Um, but then that kind of evolved into kind of hybrid apps where you can mix and match native stuff with uh, with Blazor stuff. So let me show you what the reality looks like right now with uh, .NET MAUI and uh, and Blazor. Uh, so back in my command line, I'm going to move up, and I'm going to take you into something called MAUI Blazor. And let's uh, let's close this one here so I can. And no, I don't want to save. You just close that out. And I just want to bring up Mavi Blazor. Okay, apparently I brought up two. That's fine. That's it. All right. So this is the app that you get when you have, um, you know, straight up uh, Blazor. So now we're not doing the native stuff anymore. So if you look at uh, Mavi program and how it bootstraps, there is a little something in here called Blazor Web View which essentially is an abstraction. You know, uh, Cecil talked about this. A lot of things we do are, you know, shims for us to get to the stuff that we want to. This is purely a .NET MAUI app. So it starts out as a .NET MAUI app. One big benefit here is uh, since uh, we are letting .NET MAUI bootstrap your app, you get immediate access to all of the native stuff. So your device APIs, you know, cameras, GPS, geolocation, they're all there. Uh, but inside, we are saying, let's use something called the Blazor Web View, which essentially is a wrapper that figures out what platform are you running on. If you're running on iOS, it's going to give you the iOS or the Safari Web View. If you're running on Windows, it gives you Web View too. If you're running on Mac, it gives you WK Web View. So it just renders a Web View, which is essentially not running Node.js, not running Chromium. It's just the Web View that the platform provides out of the box. So we start there and then things change. So it's pointing to, uh, if I look at, you know, main pages.xaml, it doesn't have much. It doesn't have, it only has this little piece of XAML and that's all the XAML you ever have to look at if you don't want to do XAML. Everything here is in Blazor Web View. It just gives you that bootstrapping container and it says, hey, I know how to render your first root component and let's start. So it comes to main.razor and uh, that, that knows how to, um, render your uh, all of your blazer components right so your routing everything is good so everything that you see here in under pages this is all blazer stuff right so if you have a, another team maintaining blazer apps you can bring it over uh, and everything is blazer uh, right from the get-go this is the classic you know blazer index page and uh, you can run this very easily uh, so let, let's go ahead and run this actually and i'm going to actually maybe run this on uh, mac catalyst just to kind of show you um, that it's it's the same so Sam, we got a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Paradise Fallen said, so mobile Blazor bindings will be available in Maui? Um, I want to say no from the, fr uh, at the at a GA perspective, because again, um, it, it comes down to what do people, most people want to do. Most people are not like me. Uh, and most people want to do the hybrid stuff, which is this. So I, I doubt that mobile Blazor bindings will come out of the experimental mode in by the time dot in Maui hits GA. But you know, who knows what the future holds? Maybe it will be another option. Okay, so um, this is a .NET MAUI app. Now this is uh, rendered as uh, you know a native Mac desktop application. This is Apple uh, having the same problem. Everybody wants to write for iOS. Not many people want to write for the Mac desktop, so they have to make a bridge to come from UI kit to app kit, which is what Mac desktop uses. So their solution is Mac Catalyst, depends on Xcode 13, Mac OS Monterey. Uh, but once you have it, uh, this is just rendering one big uh, web view. Everything under like this line, if you have done any Blazor, this is the Blazor uh, you know, uh, standard template, your, your counter component and everything just works, but it's just rendered in a giant web view. This is all web stuff. This is all HTML, CSS, JavaScript rendered inside. Uh, of uh, a web view. So now you might ask like, uh, how is this different? Well, um, if, if you had to bring, if you had a Blazor app today, and there are a couple of ways in which you can bring it over to desktop, you can do a PWA, 
uh, nothing stopping you. Uh, you can do uh, Electron Shell, nothing stopping you, or you can now do MAUI, which uh, makes it nicer because Blazor runs on the same .NET as, as MAUI does. Um, so, and actually, just to kind of show you uh, uh, the same code everywhere, let's uh, let's pull up a little site here. It's a tiny little, um, uh, and I, I know David does some signal art. This is a little, like, Hello World real-time app. Uh, so I have a little dashboard here that's hosted on Azure. I can say web says hi, and it's real time. It's really tiny. And then I can uh, go do the same thing from my .NET MAUI app, right? So uh, this is Blazor here uh, on Mac Catalyst I'm saying hello and send. You see how immediate it is. So it's, it's a real time app. It doesn't matter. It's, this is this is running web code, but I can also write native .NET code. It's the same. Uh, everywhere, uh, and also um, while I, while we have this running, let's uh, let's do one more thing here. I'm going to new up a new window, and uh, it's a little bigger so we can look at it. All right, so let's do one more uh, thing uh, just to kind of look at you know migration wise, uh, what are your options? Uh, there's this thing called minimal APIs which you don't have to use, but it's real nice if you do. Um, so. Uh, yeah, let me let me bring this up and then we are going to look at uh, what that code does for it. Uh, so I'm going to just do a .NET run, right? So um, before we look at the code, so it's just essentially um, uh, launching the Minimal API project and it's on localhost uh, right here, right? And I can go to it. I'll, I'll show you what the code looks like in just a second. Uh, so here is, uh, you know, Minimal API is running locally. It gives me hello world. And if I go look at um like a person endpoint it gives me elon musk who is now the 2021 time person of the year <laughs> so i can actually hit this same endpoint yeah i don't know if it'll work oh josh says hey john uh it's a tiny uh uh and back end it doesn't have any authentication so don't have worry and it's got no uh, filters um so if i come to the api you can see the blazer app running on desktop now making a call to my minimal api same exact uh, api so how did this all work well uh, let's look at it. This this is uh, your minimal APIs uses. This is the .NET new web. Again, you don't have to do this, but if you do, it gives you like C sharp ten features and gives you a minimal place to start out. And then you can do all of your CRUD, your create, read, update, delete, all the stuff. So bare minimum .NET six runtime uh, implicit global usings are enabled. So now my program .cs literally can be three lines. This is my map get that got me hello world. This is my person class, and that's using a C-sharp record to render out Elon Musk. And you can actually map this to like a post method. You can do you know fancy things like that, uh, but it's very easy to kind of get started. <clears throat> so you, you see how minimum APIs can be your backend for running .NET on the backend, and then your front end can be, uh, can be anything. Um, okay, so let's let's close this out, uh, close that out, and let's look at you know some other stuff. On while we are on this, uh, I'm going to launch Windows and uh, come back to it, um, just so we have time for other things. And then while you're launching Windows, there's a yeah. quick question that someone popped up. I can't bring up the question, but it's from Jose, and Jose comes to like all of our shows. He I feel like he lo okay. he lurks in every chat room. <laughs> Um, and I mean that in a good way. Definitely shout out to Jose. But Jose is asking, um, can I compile using AOT and targeting Maui for Windows? So I'm guessing, can he use AOT with Maui on Windows? Um, yes, yes, you, you actually can. Um, but there are things that are being worked on right now. So um, what uh, what Jose is asking is like how does your app you know start and how did the code get compiled and, and shipped out? Um, yeah. So uh, it used to be a lot of JIT, especially on Android, but then we have learned doing fast rendering. Uh, the AOT on Windows, um, I, I want to say they're actually almost done with it, and this is where the tooling comes in. Um, so they have to depend a little bit on the Windows app SDK, which is WinUI three, um, but. Come uh, closer to .NET MAUI GA time, you should be able to compile uh, apps out of .NET MAUI project natively uh, as it was on, on a WinUI 3 project. So it will do full on uh, AOT, if that makes sense. He, he's asking how though, like so is there so, like a specific, um, uh, maybe there's a link we could share to further resources. You said WinUI, is that a, a somewhere I should send them? Yeah, so if you look up the docs for WinUI 3, um, that is how you get started with a, a straight up native Windows desktop app. So, and that's that's what Dr. Maui is rendering when it goes to goes to Windows. Yeah. 
Um, okay, uh, I got like six minutes, right? Or maybe maybe a little bit more. Uh, okay, maybe so... a little less. No. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so for those of you on Windows, you want to be on VS 2022 preview because VS 2022 shipped with um, uh, the 17.0, that's the production ready version, but you have to be one um, bit forward, preview one, which is, has which has the latest like MAUI bits and the templates will show up. Um, if you are on preview one, the three templates, MAUI, MAUI Blazor, and just MAUI class library. So uh, I want to show you like, three or four more things before we go. And we still haven't gotten to a lot of JavaScript yet. It's, it's a lot to go over, but uh, I wanted to show you this at least. Uh, so this is the same, you know, Dr. Maui project, but here, uh, let me um, go ahead and run this real quick. Uh, so now you will see that the same project runs on, you know, Windows as well. Uh, it's all um, Blazor code, but it's rendered all inside uh, Dr. Maui or uh, inside that web view. So it's gonna spin up real quick. Uh, so now you'll see that this one here actually does mix and match a little bit of native stuff with uh, Windows stuff. So um, in this one here, like this is what the Blazor mobile binding started out with. You can actually mix and match. So here's a counter. This is a Blazor counter and that label is a native label. So I can increment that from here and I can increment that from here because now the Blazor component is actually driving the native UI, which is nice. And if uh, the chat room has not killed our little Azure service yet, uh, we can still do this from Windows and uh, go back here, you know, all the way back here. Uh, Blazor on Windows says hi, right? So same exact code running on iOS, Android, uh, uh, you know, Mac and Windows, which is nice. Um, so let me show you uh, one thing while we are on Windows. And uh, this is the question about like, how do I move things over if, I on, uh, if I'm on WinForms or um, you know, WPF, right? Do I have to redo everything as .NET MAUI? Uh, no, you don't have to. You definitely get most of the benefits if you are on going to Dr. Maui, but if you don't need some of the native APIs, you don't need to. So this is a classic WPF project, and it's it actually started out running on .NET Framework. I migrated that to uh, move over to uh, you know .NET 6, but I'm bringing in one NuGet package here. It's called WebView2 WPF, right? When I use the Blazor WebView, it's actually rendering this. So you don't need to go uh, to the Blazor WebView. You can actually do this um, built in in any embed this in any WPF or WinForms. I'm rendering the WebView 2 here. I'm just pointing it to a source. And if I go ahead and uh, start this real quick, uh, this is a native WPF app, right? But inside of it, all of this stuff is all, all web stuff because I just gave it a giant web view, right? So this may be the lowest hanging fruit. If you have an open uh, app that you are rendering anywhere on your enterprise, you can just throw it in your WPF app. And you can actually get some listeners. So as people do stuff on your web view, you can have some events that you want to respond to from, from WPF code. Uh, now, let me show you one other version of this. Again, talking through uh, some of the uh, modernization uh, patterns. Um, what if you actually did want to use um, or write Blazor code inside of your WPF app or your WinForms app? You can do that too. Here, I still am bringing in the web view, but with that, I also get the Blazor web view. So I am rendering the Blazor web view. I'm letting it do all the blazor stuff, but except here I have taken off all the styling. There is no CSS, right? Um, so if I go down here to my counter, this is a Blazor counter component as you, as you would expect. So if I go around this now, um, you're gonna see that I have a WPF app with a counter um, and it does the counter thing, but it doesn't look like a web app, right? Because I've taken away all the styling. Now it's just pure Blazor uh, running on a WPF app. So you can embed things with the Blazor web view. And this is uh, a great modernization story because it gives you those ways to kind of modernize parts of your application instead of taking in the whole thing. That is okay. awesome, Sam. Uh, I yeah. think we're gonna, I think you cover a lot and you might need to come back to show us more. Uh, and... I could, or um, <laughs> if, if, if I can make David happy. David, do I have one more minute? Uh, sure. Yeah. Right. One, more minute. Yes. one more minute. I, I want to make David happy because uh, I, I feel for all the web developers in the house, right? Okay. One last project I'm going to show you. Uh, so let me bring this up. Sorry for keeping you folks longer. I mean, I was, I was happy before if that wasn't obvious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's show you one more thing. So let's say you have uh, investments into Angular now and you're hearing all this stuff with Blazor and .NET, and you're wondering, what, where does my Angular stuff go? It doesn't need to go anywhere. It can actually live side by side. 
Um, so I'm going to copy over this uh, this iOS build one more time, and we're going to fire this up. So this is a straight up Angular project, right? Let's say you have Angular projects and all of your dependencies with Node and whatever. Uh, at the end of the day, you can do this for React and Vue as well. All of these are web apps, right? And essentially, they get compiled down into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's how your browser knows how to deal with it, right? So uh, we can actually take that whole app, compile it down, and just shove it inside .NET MAUI. .NET MAUI does not care because the Blazor web view is a web view. It will render any app, any web app that you give it. Um, so uh, once this comes back up, you're going to see a standard Angular CLI app right, rendered inside uh, an iOS or Android or Mac or Windows container. And uh, the only way this works is because if I look at the code here, uh, this is just a standard Mavi Blazor app. We are using the web view. But instead of having all of the pages here, which I have not deleted that yet, in my www root, uh, I am bringing in all of the, you know, this is the Blazor index view. This is how Blazor starts up. I'm giving it the index HTML that Angular needs. So it has the scripting, uh, you know, and the dependencies that Angular has all in place, all right here. So we do an NS uh, build uh, for our production, copy the files over, and then it starts working. Here's my main page XAML. All I'm doing here is not letting Blazor render the root component and just letting Angular drive to my index.html. So if you're doing any of those, you know, server side or, you know, client side spa apps, they're all very welcome in .NET MAUI. So, uh, not as clean as Blazor because it, it's not running on .NET 6, but you have the interrupt so you can talk to .NET and JavaScript. But this is, again, things to consider when you are looking at an organization and kind of mixing and matching and getting the most code uh, reuse out of it. I'm officially happy now. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I went long. I just wanted to share that. Yeah. No, no that's awesome. The, thank you. Thank you, Sam, so much for for joining us today. I've, I learned a lot personally, so hopefully... People did too. Uh, we didn't get to all the questions, so maybe reach out to Sam on Twitter. Um, he will. I'm, I'm sure he will be happy to help you. Yes. And happy holidays, happy new year. We're taking a break and we're coming back next year with an awesome show with Lena, Lena Lux on Monday, January 3rd to talk about game development with .NET. So uh, that's, I, I think it's gonna be awesome as well. So happy new year, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye, folks.